Hey everyone, what's up? Are you one or zero here? So this must be my this must be the eighth video that I create for my cloud security series on AWS. Uh, today we're gonna cover another playground by Bishop Fox. If you watched the previous videos in the series, the first two videos were related to I am vulnerable, which is a playground by Bishop Fox. This one is another playground called Cloud Foxable by Bishop Fox again. It's a super brilliant one. Um, there is a GitHub page that we will clone the repository and set up our environment. And there is also a website that the Cloud Foxable uh, dashboard has hosted. So you can actually enter the flags once you find them. So it looks like the following. Uh, there are a bunch of exercises. I'm going to cover some of them in here. Some of them are more advanced. Since this is a one-on-one series, um, I'm going to cover, I'm not going to cover all of them. Uh, but for the rest, um, instead of one-on-one, if we make it like two-on-one or something, like a next level series, I'll try to cover them more. Cool. So what's this series is about? Again, it includes so many different uh, vulnerabilities on the AWS environment misconfigurations, privilege escalations, etc, etc. Um, and this way you basically get exposure to all kind of different AWS services, what kind of privilege escalation scenarios uh, there may be on them, and try to do enumeration and find your way around that. Perfect, so if you're ready, let's jump in with the setup of our own environment. As the first step, we're gonna go to the GitHub page, it also explains how to install it. We're going to clone the repository, go to our terminal, the same comment as always, git clone, go to the directory we just um, downloaded. Of course, the next um, step is Terraform init to initiate Terraform, and then we will run Terraform apply to create all of the resources. Um, for some of the exercises here, you need to uh, mention this in the Terraform file uh, because they are by default um, included as false so when you say terraform apply they're not going to be created because there is a cost associated with them but there are some of them that are for free so that's something to keep in mind there are great instructions as well so that if you're confused if it's included in the free run as well uh, you just need to go to that website cloudfoxable.bishopfox.com uh, which uh, gives all the details about these perfect so let's start with the first exercise directly. It's a secret. Oh yeah, just another thing to add is um, that's the dashboard that you're seeing. I finished them, so that's green, but uh, you'll see them as gray. Uh, the first flag is basically once you run Terraform apply, at the end of it, it will give you the first flag already. So this is basically trying to test if you actually, if you're able to go through these steps. So. Um, that will already give you the syntax like that as well. So we're continuing with the first one, uh, which is called It's a Secret. Let's read it first. Um, CloudFox was run non-required, yes, because this is already included in the Terraform file as um, set up true. So uh, the first two policies will allow us to run CloudFox, which is a tool, obvi obviously with this exercise, we're also um, highlighting, the, highlighting this tool. Uh, so we will run that. Uh, and then the third policy, uh, will give us the flag. So we will do quite a lot of enumeration on um, IAM service. So let's just jump right in it. Um, the default setup will already give us some um, credentials. It already tells us also which kind of comment we need to run, uh, like a one-liner to add the credentials. So that's perfect. We don't need to manually do it. Uh, you can just confirm it by reading the AWS, uh, that AWS credentials file. Um, and as you can see, it added a profile called Cloud Foxable. As always, the first comment that you can think of is AWS, SDS, get caller identity to check for the account ID, um, the username, etc. The details that you can find in the ARN, um, ARN value. Let's see. All right, so this is the CTFs dash starting dash user is our username, which was already given here in the challenge overview. Uh, and we get the account ID as well. This is that you can run CloudFox using CloudFoxable profile um, and see if you can access the secret name, it's a secret. Um, we can do it with running this tool, but I'm gonna use it in the next exercises. First, I start doing it uh, by manually. 
um, since a user profile is given to us, if you watched the previous videos, uh, mentioned the same thing all the time, what we're going to do is we're going to check for policies. So one comment that we can run is AWS IAM list user policies, give the username and profile. Another um, option is list attach user policies. And as you can see, we're finding three policies in here. And it's a secret policy is uh, attached to this user. So let's get the details of this policy. If you remember from the previous videos, first you check for the list attached or without attached user policies. Then when you find the policy names, you're gonna want to have um, you're gonna have to run get policy comment to check the default version. Uh, once you get that, you're gonna run get policy version comment, and you're gonna specify the default version ID that you got from the previous comment, like the get policy. Um, so that you can see the content of the policy in this way. So we will give the version ID as we want. When we run that, we're going to get the content of the policy. So it is basically SSM get parameter on this specific um, parameter. So what I'm going to do is now I know that I need to use SSM for the secret, not secrets manager. So uh, that's what we're going to do, AWS, SSM, and then you can check for a uh, couple of comments that you can use for SSM, but describe is the one that's basically going to give you the list of it, and we're attaching the profile, of course, and in here, we're going to find a secret, the secret that's been mentioned uh, previously, like a CloudFox bull flag, it's a secret, uh, but just once we find that, we just need to check for the details of it, so that's going to be our comment to get the details of it. AWS, SSM, get parameter. And then this uh, parameter name is going to be the following. And of course, we need to add attach the profile, uh, which should be cloud flexible because that's the only user we have and only profile we have. And this is going to give us a value that's encoded. So we can run the following comment, the decryption, to make sure that it's uh, given to us without any encryption. So as you can see, we get the first flag for the first exercise. So let's jump right into the next exercise, which is called It's Another Secret. These are all 50 points worth. That means like these are all beginner stuff. So um, it should be be relevant to these videos so, okay let's jump right into it and I think we have enough understanding that we need to use some assume and then we need to check for the permissions of the assume role and let's see what's waiting for us so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check for the roles uh, with AWS I am list roles and given the profile cloud flexible and then we're gonna look for the role name ads as, as it's been given to us in the uh, description so once we find it, we will assume this role um, and add the profile details. Here we go, we found the role name ads already. So we have the air run for it. And as you can see, um, we can contact SDS assume role uh, by starting with CTF starting user. Um, so which we are, it's already actually allows us to verify that we can um, assume this role. So that's what we're gonna do. And the command we are using is AWS SDS assume role. We need to give the role ARN. Um, it's given in here, and we're going to attach it. And of course, you need to mention the profile, which is called Cloud Foxable, the original default profile that we were given with. And you need to also specify role session name. And of course, you are getting credentials in this way, which you are going to add to your um, AWS credentials file, as always. We're going to go there, we're going to add the access key, secret key, and the session token. Let's add it quickly. Let's call the profile ads and add the rest of the details here. Of course, we verify the profile with SCS get caller identity to get the account ID, role name, etc. We already did that. Next thing we want to do is very similar to the previous exercise. We're going to check with um, SSM get parameters, and this time we're giving the profile ads. And this time we're gonna check for the parameter name. Um, it's another secret. The same way that we did in the previous exercise. Since we know the uh, syntax for it, we just edit in this way. Um, and you need to specify the region and you can ask for without, uh, with decryption so that you're gonna, you don't need to decode it. And here we go. And the same syntax as we did before, we just get the flag in this way. 
I think it was an easy one, um, but it's a cool one. It's just a variation of the previous exercise. All right, the third one is gonna be backwards. So let's have a look at it. So, so go find out who has access to domain administrator credentials in Secrets Manager, and then use your Cloud Foxable profile to access to that role and grab the secret. Okay, we have a bit of understanding what we're supposed to do. There are some hints. Uh, we need to do something with Secrets Manager. There is a secret. We are trying to understand who has access to that secret. Um, and then from there, we will grab it. So not sure what, what do we need to do, but let's start with enumerating and try to figure out. This is the tool I'm talking about, Cloud Folks. Um, it is very cool coloring and everything. And it's very neat that you can see the output. Um, so let's use it for this exercise. I tried to do the previous two exercises manually, uh, but this tool is great if you want to enumerate in an automated way. So let's run uh, CloudFox binary. You need to attach the profile. You need to mention first which cloud provider. It also supports other providers as well. We're using AWS. We're attaching profile with dash B option. We're looking for permissions and a v2 and we want to grab anything with secret or secrets manager as this is the um, service that we are interested in so when we send that it gives a bunch of output and let's see which one is useful to us and make it a bit smaller so we can see the big picture here so since we are looking for this secret, Domain Administrator Credentials, we're going to look specifically for it. And we see it in the first line already. So this is a role that uh, has access to it. And that's the secret that we're talking about, Domain Administrator Credentials, something, da, da, da. Um, so now we know who has access to it. That, that's been mentioned in the description. So of course, we will try to assume this role that's been, that we found here. Uh, but before we do that, we need to air and, and everything. So let me list four roles uh, using my default profile, Cloud Foxable, and try to find this role um, that has permissions on the secret and see if we can actually assume it. So Alexander Arnold is the one that we're talking about. And I'm seeing it already as the second role in the JSON output. So as you can also see in the statement, it says that um, our user can assume this role. So that's what we're going to do. AWS SAS assume role. We are going to get the role ARN and we need to give the profile as well. Um, so we're assuming this role attached to current profile called Foxable. Um, so that we can get the credentials for this role. The same story. Once we get the credentials, we're going to add it to our AWS credentials file. We go we get the credentials just directly added to our aws credentials file let's save this file looks good uh, let's copy that profile name that we're going to use for the rest of the enumeration and we're going to use service secrets manager so we want to get the secret value for this following secret id which is uh, domain administrator um, credentials so paste it in here which is going to give us the flag there we go. We can just copy it and paste it in our um, dashboard. Perfect. That's correct. Nice. So let's jump into the next one, which is called needles. So let's see the description for it first. So we have no idea what we are supposed to do. The only thing we know is it has read only access. So we're trying to think which services there may be that allows me to work with read only access. Uh, for sure, we need to do some enumeration, but first let's get the credentials for Ramos so we can add it to our profile. Always, I need to list the roles so that I can find Ramos users, ARN, um, which I'm going to use for AWS SDS assume role comment. So let's copy that, ARN, and run the comment AWS SDS assume role. Uh, you need to get role session name and then the role ARN. And then the profile is Cloud Foxable, which will give us AWS credentials for the role Ramos. And the next thing I want to do is running Cloud Fox by using the permissions Ramos. So when I go through the output, I see that I have a bunch of um, permissions on Cloud Formation. So describe is one of them. And I'm going to use describe stacks to find the stack IDs and the stack names. 
uh, that we can list and we're finding one here so I want to list the stack resources for this specific stack and as you can see I, I found a bunch of uh, resources in here and I'm finding one here resource type secret manager secret so that looks juicy and maybe that's useful for us and it also says not important since this is a CTF I'm assuming that's a trick here so the next thing we are doing is getting the template which is going to give us the secret string and and the flag and that was all for this one another very simple exercise next exercise is going to be furls one and it says in the challenge details that a lambda function url can be used to expose a lambda function to the internet without an api gateway or another load balancer this is really handy for builders but can also be really handy for offensive secret folk folks as it's ripe for misconfiguration uh, use CloudFox to find the first one function URL and find the flag. I have to admit, Lambda is my favorite service when it comes to exploitation. So let's see. So since we're talking about Lambda, let's first list the functions to find the functions that will be relevant to us. We're finding the function name furls, furls one in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the function. Um, and I see that I don't have the permissions for that one. Then I want to get, get get function URL config and it is giving me the URL for this function. All right, that's going to be useful to us. Since we get the URL, we can start um, enumerating on that. We are using vget to get the um, content under us and we get the index.html file, which is directly giving us the flag. So that was an easy one. <laughs> Basically, the only thing that we need to do is get the config URL for this Lambda function. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Just stay tuned for more AWS cloud security content. Cheers, guys.